Yeah, so Dr. Tony Suo, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here today um, on the Let's Do Humans podcast. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to go into a brief history as to why I wanted to have you on as a podcast guest and the reasoning behind it and some of the interesting works that you're doing and some of the works that you have done in the past. Yeah. Um, I first came into your content online. I know you do a lot of like interviews with BBC, Sky and so forth. And one of the things that drew you to me initially was your understanding of how the destruction of the home and in particular the, the, the disappearance of the fathers from the home had an impact in the black community. So listening to that, usually when I hear these type of conversations, a lot of it tends to be excuses and people blaming like the system, the government and so forth. But listening to some of your content, I realized that you were looking at it directly from a family perspective yeah. and how that's having an impact on the children growing up. But before we get further into these type of topics, I would like you first of all to introduce yourself, who you are and some of the works that you're doing and have done in the past. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. I mean, basically who I am, what am I? What do I do? Well, <laughs> That's always the I, magical I suppose, question, isn't it? Who are we? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the, the, to be or not to be, that is the question. I mean, I suppose for me that one of the key things um, uh, I feel I am at the moment is, is at the end of a, of a kind of cycle that went from being a student living and being brought up in Britain from Jamaican parentage yeah. to... Actually, I mean, education plays a part in that because I, I, I ended up teaching, I ended up doing um, higher education research, then teaching in the school system, then teaching in the university system, mm -hmm. and then coming back out now after all that sort of beaten up and all that. No, that really <laughs> I'd say, you know, I've enjoyed that journey and also going around the world and doing a bit of teaching there as well. Yeah. So I've kind of had a sense of, of, of what education kind of is. And and I've kind of come out feeling that um, a lot of it isn't very good, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll put my hands up and say a lot of it isn't very good. Is that education? I mean, I, mean, I, I, think, I think it's 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 not very good because I think we got ourselves locked up in a, in a kind of system that wasn't fit for purpose. Yeah. And this was, this was irrespective of black children, I just think working class children generally, it really was designed in the end for basically people who um, uh, had time and had leisure and had money. Yeah. And then I think the other stuff was bolted on after as an afterthought. <laughs> and I think really that's really what has kind of happened, you know. And, and the afterthought bit was because basically children, in a sense, were not designed to be educated in England. They were designed to just go out to work. So, to work, we're, yeah. so really, children, a child mm. only gets into into real existence in the twentieth century, really yeah. in the early part of the twentieth century after the First World War. After that, kids are just there to, to basically you, you have children and they and they're there for you to, to for working class people anyway, yeah. you know, for to go into work. So they're not there necessarily to be educated and then so we have to then have a, a system of mass education mm -hmm. and it's 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 it, it, it's when you start trying to design that that um we really i can't think of it funny enough it, it's probably only now i think we've got, got to terms with some of that yeah but, exactly but, we're feeling but, the effects of what's happened along the years in regards to the education system now yeah and that, yeah. that, that, that system was exported across the world as well and and, mm. and, and the no, the idea of a teacher in the front mm. of a classroom and and, yeah. and, and te t talking to a bunch of kids and them learning stuff you know is that is that fit for purpose now and then we've then we've got the the internet revolution as mm. well you see so um I I, I kind of think that um, the one of the best parts of education now is actually nature, sitting out in the garden. <laughs> and watching, what, like what we're watching, doing right now, yeah. Watching the magpies go by, yeah. I mm. mean, that's, that's, that's one thing. No, look, there are a couple of things that you've got to learn and got to know about. And I think that um, I found that, um, I used, funny enough, I used to spend a lot of my time, funny enough, I self-excluded from the classroom. I was probably the only person, I think, in the UK who would bunk off lessons to go to the library. Oh, wow. Yeah, because my school was so bad yeah. <coughs> that I would um, I would miss lessons to because I wanted to I wanted to find out stuff. So yeah. by I a young I, age, sorry to cut you off, by a young age, how did you realise that school was bad or the education system wasn't right for you? I, you knew that you knew that what you were having 
because this thing was so stratified mm. in the early days, and it still is to a certain extent, but where you had grammar schools, um, secondary schools, you know, and, and, and that 11 plus system was was really a kind of sorting sorting out in terms of sheep and goat, really. Yeah. And we were the goats, really, because we ended up... Actually, I was the last year of doing the 11 plus my 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 year. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was unlucky. I'm not gonna ask you how long ago that was. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't ask. Don't ask. <laughs> but um, so we did that, and we ended up all ended up in us in in secondary schools, mm. and um, I suppose the battle then was just to get something, some quality knowledge, and I kind of, I I, I suppose for me one of the things that I maybe it's a good question about what you made what I realised because I was having a kind of parallel kind of existence because I, I, my mum sent me to a church of England funny enough and mm. we were the only black people in the church but this was a very middle class church and it mm. was quite interesting that mm. and I think the class thing has st stuck around for me from that time because they all went off to university all the all the all the teenagers yeah. in, the, in that in that group so what was going on? We, we, so I say we, and I it's not, I'm talking about royal we here. It's just me, my brother, and my sister, <laughs> the three of us. Yeah. And we all then thought, oh, okay. And they were our peers. They were our group. So we, what mm. my mum did was create accidentally a new a peer group that was different than what we had at school. Yeah, it was in the church because they all they, they all went off. They all went to independent schools. But what we so they, because they were our friends, and this is the thing that is. It will persist in the work I will do again and, and, and persist in, I think, in the way in which I think about segregation in education mm. is that we had a set of group of people who were going into the mainstream society and, 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 and there was a kind of, um, I suppose, uh, um, a theme yeah. that, that was there and it was, it was quite clear that what you did. So everybody was going, therefore we should go. So very much that was yeah. what the deal was. So, off we all went, you see what I mean? Because that was the template. So yeah. I didn't know anything else. So I thought, well, my mates went, I want to go as well. And they, and of course, they, they went to, and I knew the names of the university. Because I forget, my school wasn't telling me all of that, mm. you see. And most of the kids that went to my school did go to jail. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or went to some, or were in some kind of, you know, kind of, uh, uh, kind of interaction with the reform system. Yeah. And so he got so so therefore we 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 had to find another funnel mm. to 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 um to, for that to work. Not all, but you know a lot of them did yeah. end up in that. So yeah, so that, so early on in my head was um, and I, I kind of it sort of scratched into my brain that let's let's try and do something different here. Mm. And I always wanted to do something different, and that was so that that helped. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Um, it's interesting you said how a lot of your peers ended up in prison. Do you mind me asking, were these your black peers or were they? No, was no, it just a mixture of... Yeah, there's so many stories. It, no, there's, there's, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite interesting because one yeah. of them at the moment, he, said, he went off to... He was the top of the class. Yeah. He, this was so funny. He went to... He was a doctor. Mm. He's an Asian guy, Caribbean Asian. Yeah. He ended up now... We just went recently. He ended up in prison in America for um, doing operations that were not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, we're thinking of having a, a, a trip over there to Catch visit him. Okay. Yeah, to sort of go over old times. But even he was quite interesting, his story, because he came from Guyana. He was born in Guyana. Mm. And nobody, nobody even heard, in, in our school, nobody even heard where that was. Where yeah. was that? Was that Ghana, Guyana? I didn't even yeah. know where it was. And, and, then, and then, of course, he ended up. And he had... He, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. So when when somebody comes from foreign in our school, they say, "Oh, he better go to the he better go to the special needs class." Yeah, because that's what you where you went. So he came in the school when he was he was eleven, twelve, and he I remember him being there with all the special needs kids. And what are you doing there? And then they suddenly realised that he was a math genius. <laughs> so suddenly they shot shot him up to the top class yeah. quickly. <laughs> I've had a similar experiences, actually. Yeah, yeah in those yeah. days, it was, I mean, to, to be honest, I mean, you talk about a generational thing. There was some madness going on in those early days. So I mean, I, I, I experienced exactly that because yeah. I came to this country um, around about that age and from Ghana. Okay. <laughs> and obviously I had the strong accent. English was not my first language, yeah. although it was a language I spoke well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so primary school, everyone literally, everyone just comes, floods you, me, my brother. 
only black kids in Kent. Yeah. And yeah, they thought, wait, hold on. You, you, you don't know English. You don't know maths. Yeah. But these times I was smarter than them. Yeah. I got put forward to actually do the 11 plus in my area. Okay, yeah. Um, which I failed, which will come, yeah. we'll come to that later on. But yeah, <laughs> so that experience, I, I can definitely... Yeah, I mean, mm. p- p- people have got stories of all of that. And it kind of, as I said about the thing not working in some ways, because people were... I mean, we were in this sort of mad system. and we, We'd spend lots of times just not doing any work, really, just, just playing or fighting. You know, yeah. It was a boy's school. Yeah. And, um, but I don't, I don't, I don't, re- I don't, it doesn't hold me, I don't resent it or anything like that. I'm actually mm. glad for that experience because in some ways it helped me to kind of, as I said, quite, quite resilient. Um, and as I said, I had the church and, uh, and that helped in, in, not necessarily religiously, but it helped me in a kind of, in a scholarly, scholarly way, in the sense that there was a, a sense that um, uh, academic work, and um, you know, was was good, and, and and there was another there was another kind of set of peer groups who were doing some stuff. So I yeah. had a way out. Yeah. And I always think there is a way out as well. There's no, most way, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. There was a channel yeah. out of it, and um, you know, so I think so. That was <laughs> yeah. That was that was interesting. I don't know. I mean, um, I I. I the, the school itself, I, I suppose, in many ways, um, I I wasn't easy person either to sort of deal with. So, it, th- this thing about behaviour is quite interesting mm-hmm. because um, my, my my school reports were really bad, really poor, and yeah. the behaviour was terrible from my part. Yeah. And I don't I don't blame my teachers for racism or for a system, or my parents. I just think that. It's a personal was, thing. Yeah, yeah it was, mm. I was just a badly behaved person. I just think <laughs> that you can have to just have to accept that. I think sometimes, yeah. sometimes we try and rationalise some of this stuff. And, yeah. as I, and as I got into teaching and as I got into the other way of looking at it, I suppose I, 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 I could identify with some of the students, but on another level, I could see where the wall was being pulled over my eyes yeah. because I was there when, where they were. You yeah. Know? And... Um, you know, I mean, what is what is poor behaviour in the way? I, I hear so many people giving different excuses for it. Mm. I'm not sure. I think sometimes it's just simply that you <laughs> you just. Um, I think I think some of it's to do with masculinity. I yeah. think it's, it's just boys do, being boys. As yeah, I think I think yeah. I do think it was that. I do think I do. I do that's why mm. I wrote. I've been writing about yeah. boys' achievement. I do think that a lot of it was energy and mm. needing to to deal with that. Um, even though my dad was around, um, it, it still didn't prevent that kind of that kind of um, poor behaviour. And yeah. I'm not really going to go into things, but there were some notorious things I did mm. at that particular time. Um, you know, that I kind of look back and I think, well, I don't, I don't, I don't beat myself up over it. Yeah. But at the same time, I think that um, I, I had to go through that a process and a period to get round that. Now, I was lucky. Some of my peers did end up in jail. Mm. I don't know. I, I may have if I'd if I'd gone out, if I got caught or I'd been in a... Yeah. If I, I mean, they were just probably not smart enough. That's why they got caught. <laughs> <laughs> but my, crimes, my crimes and misdemeanours were really kind of quite yeah. clever, you know, so they, they got away with it. But mm. I was not, you know, I mean, these things are not things... I mean, let me get you right. These are not things that um, were kind of sort of sickeningly harming people. They yeah, were just, they yeah, were just things. And stuff. Yeah, but they, they, yeah. they were enough to rack, it, rack up the... <laughs> the... The reason why I asked the, um, the question in regards to whether it was um, your black mates who ended up in prison or not, is um, recently you had an interesting debate at the Oxford Union and the topic of the debate was whether the education system, or in particular the British education system, perpetuates racism. And you were debating another doctor who said the system is completely racist, it was structured to make black people feel. And I tend to hear a lot of those reasonings for a lot of things that's happening nowadays whether it be the workplace or whether it be the education system or just society in general the finger always tends to get pointed towards racism and you made a few great pointers in regards to why the system or in particular the education system doesn't perpetuate racism can you elaborate a bit about well, that and uh, just expand I mean, on I what mean, you were pe- saying people will think that's an appalling thing to say and they think oh you're in denial or whatever but yeah. i've already showed you in my own experience mm-hmm. i take full responsibility for my, my own bad behavior in mm-hmm. school i should have been 
that well in those days this is going back really we we, we the interesting thing we didn't need the, the exclusion levels were quite interesting now because school expulsion school exclusions would be a measure of you could measure that as saying that would be an indicator of of how racism is so poor but because mm. they were using the cane in my school you yeah. know notoriously i mean i was being night, be? <laughs> no, night and day i mean it was like it was regular it was like yeah. trying to probably once a week yeah oh, uh, yeah as much as that how, and, how um, was that Huh? How, how was that in terms well, of like, how, nice. what was the <laughs> no, I mean, like, like, what, what was the process in terms of I just was annoyed up? I got caught yeah <laughs> but um, I mean, how did it happen so what did they take you into a separate room and beat you or beat no, you the, well, the system was such that you, the head teacher could do that oh, wow, yeah. and so that was and everybody accepted that do you think we should bring rule. it back no <laughs> I think time changed no teachers end up getting beaten up in the no, current yeah, climate you don't need that now you don't need that now <laughs> yeah. at all but at that time that, I mean I don't know I mean I can't tell you tell me whether it was brutality or whatever I don't know mm. maybe it was I don't know I wasn't in, I was in a time and I was in a phase I know I, I transgressed the rules mm. um, you know and, and therefore um, once, one time I, I let down the tyres of all the teachers cars in no the way. school <laughs> <laughs> and that was just for just for the sake of it yeah just for bands and then, <laughs> and then the, the, the <laughs> So, well, something had to happen. Had the consequences had to happen for that. Yeah. yeah. So, what are you going to say? Oh, I'm black. Therefore, I did let down the tyres. Some yeah. somehow there's some deficiency. Or the system or is it, forced you to do si it. Yeah, the, black, yeah. Yeah. Some racism forced me to let the tyres down. Mm. Um, um. What you know? What you know? What was that? What was? Oh, I might. Some people. You can imagine today. Some people coming along and say, "Oh, we better get inside his head. It must be something to do with slavery or something like that." Yeah. <laughs> made him let down the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you keep going on and on and on trying to find these yeah. these mad excuses. My mum was here now, she would say, you know, it was notoriously bad, you mm. know. And um and my brother and sister would say the same thing. They know, you know, mm. so I could never I could mm. never be honest in myself mm. and say that I had a system locked up against me. No. Yeah. Also the other thing is I um found that um the more and more I was involved in the mainstream society of Britain, this is something that I want to kind of share with you because I think mm. it's it's it, it's different, it's radical, it's like a different take on it. Every, I was lucky enough to get, for example, I used to get some really, really good, I mean, really good Saturday jobs, or yeah. not Saturday jobs, so holiday jobs mm -hmm. in the holidays, like from college, university or school or whatever, and the church helped a bit as well, but yeah. they were always white people and stuff like that. that. Was not my. It wasn't just over just people who got me the job. Mm. So I never, I never felt in any way because because I just I used to just go and get the job. So so for some, <coughs> I suppose what is in, it, it's something about um, maybe something. And people say this is not the case. You could test. You could do these sort of trials and find mm. that. You know, a black person wouldn't get it and a white person would and da 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 da. Yeah. But I just used to go for the job. So, for example, li literally, I, the, the library job near where I lived, there was, a, there was a job as a librarian. I don't think there was any other black person. Went <laughs> I just went for the job. And it you was really? great because I was around books and that was great and it was a mm. great job. I had some, yeah, fantastic, some fantastic jobs mm. and some fantastic experiences. So I've never, I can't, I cannot say... The, uh, then of course the issue of police. Now they have they were an issue. <coughs> However, we were living in a kind of semi suburb in Penge, mm. which my mum kind of strategically placed us, a bit maybe like Kent. I don't know. Mm. And um, yeah, we were stopped occasionally. And I know that there was there were real issues with the police and racism. I do think that I can't deny that. But mm. what I'm what I'm trying to say is that I I I, I feel that. Um, very early in my own experience, which which does inform kind of my thinking, mm. was that that um, I, I I felt that um, you know I, I I had this thing called we, we in sociology they call it a technical work or agency, mm. which is your own control of your own action. So yeah. back to that question about about racism and and whether it it, it perpetuates in the education system. Yes and no, and I, but I would argue that <clears throat> what what what, what Education research has become so corrupt, mm. and I do think it's, it's the most one of the most corrupt things around at the moment. I don't read it anymore, mm. because how can you have an education research that looks into a phenomenon that's going on, 
the person who's doing the research, you know already they've got a perspective. Yeah. And, and, and every single time they do the research, it justifies their perspective. Yeah. So Wait, kind of tunnel are you going yeah, to do any research that doesn't do that? Yeah. Are you going to come up with an outcome that doesn't do that? Mm -hmm. And so, if everybody, so they politic, it's politicized, mm -hmm. you see? So, I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, oh, black, the reason for black boys underachieving is because of teacher racism. Oh, mm -hmm. I'll be tired. I've had 10, all my works and all my publications and all my interviews have been saying this, mm -hmm. and yet I get money and I do another piece of research that keeps telling me the same thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So somehow you've got to wonder, well, what's going on here? You know, is that research? Was that propaganda? Mm. And that, that, in the end, begins to kind of feed into the community, feed into the black community as yeah. well, to say that, look, you guys are really in misery. You've got nowhere to go. The whole system's locked up against you. Mm. You've, you've made no progress since you've been in this country. And it's all down to the fact that you've got these racist teachers. Yeah. What is you? Yeah, and that's the, that doesn't really give us any solution, <laughs> though, doesn't it? it just it's not even it's, it's, it's not it's, it's, it's not even true. It's not even true. Mm. This is where it, this is this is the kind of issue about whether, in fact, that narrative is one that you can run with. Because mm -hmm. what it doesn't explain is it doesn't explain two things. First of all, my agency, mm. my ability to control my world. Yeah, even back in the seventies when it was when racism was hotter than it is now. Yeah. And and I'm telling you, I was controlling my world, mm -hmm. you know. So what what does that explain? Am I an odd person or what? You know, mm -hmm. and then lots of my other friends and I were controlling their world. Yeah. See, see, see the thing is about racism, it tells you you can't control your world. Mm -hmm. you see, I mean, that it's being controlled by somebody else, the police, the housing authority, the, um, uh, you know, other people, yeah. the government, they're controlling you and you mm -hmm. have no say. You're mm -hmm. just a victim. But if I'm telling you that, I was in control of the good and the bad things, yeah. you know. I decided what really, you know, yeah. the worst decisions, the, the, the things that have been, that I've experienced have been my own fault. Mm -hmm. And the good things I've done has been me. I really haven't, white people yeah. have not really impinged on my world yeah, but to block it. You, you were able to control your agency through yourself, so it was something that you self-discovered. But how do we reverse engineer that? Well, this is what I'm is trying it, to say. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it reverse engineer or is it to do with the... F well, yeah, you have to reverse mm -hmm. engineer, but one of the things you have to do, and I found, was that you have to surround yourself with, with very positive thinking yeah. and people who are very positive mm -hmm. and can see, can see yeah. the way out. So you focus on the progressive. The, the <laughs> yeah, and in fact, I would go further to say that perhaps the new slavery, and I do, I do use that word very, because it's a word that we do use, and mm -hmm. I'm talking about mental slavery here, mm -hmm. Is is the one where there are people around who have who have a self interest, mm. a vested interest, in perpetuating mm. that misery. Yeah. And that 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 researcher, I don't even know his name at Oxford Uni. He, I, he was an example of that. He was somebody because well, <coughs> I remember debating with him, and I was I was explaining to him that look, there's some some data done in um in. Uh, Haringey, North London, mm. and he was showing quite clearly that, um, and it was quite interesting how the statistics were stacking up now, that um, girls from um, a West African background were mm. outstripping everybody. And what mm. they were doing, their GCSE results, <laughs> and it was, it was, what it was, wasn't just that they were just doing slightly better yeah. the rate in which they were improving was faster yeah. than any other That's group. Very you, it's very you, visual at the moment yeah it's yeah. Evident. <coughs> yeah, yeah. PTC, yeah yeah and, and and the rate in which they were they were they were improving was faster than any other mm. and and in mm. fact it's usually asian groups that are, that are doing well and they and if they continued that they would be in that block I mean. and he turned around to me and said oh that's just having gay <laughs> and so, so then, then, then I turn around and say, "Well, no, I think actually you find you find it's 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 a picture that's across across the whole of London because London schools are doing well, and there, and 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 actually there's been a significant improvement yeah. in the way in which no, no, that's not true. That's not mm. that's not that's that's a myth. The other the other myth is about employment. Mm. Um, the, 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 again, the, if you look at the statistics that are coming out around employment, you would have thought that oh." oh Black boys can't get any jobs. Yeah, but it's, that's that's actually not true. The the num the, the the vacancies the vacancy rate, particularly in London, mm. you know, you, yes, there is a comparative rate in terms of um, black youngsters getting work, but 
it's a massive improvement since I went since I was you know so yeah. all the time we're looking at the rate of, another another day this is quite a controversial one which is interesting even we've got data now the amount not that we should be needing to praise it but it's an it's a fact mm. when I was uh, walking around the streets of London every other kid used to I mean used to be every other story used to get of uh, like kids dying in police custody. The statistics mm. have shown that, in fact, that has just dropped to virtually none. Especially in London, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're not dying in police custody. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, although we talk about stuff and search, mm. they're definitely... So the, 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 you then ask yourself, what is the real experience? Mm. You keep going... You have to keep going back to the, the, the what, it's what statistics you want to pull out and you want to run with, and you yeah. want to push out, yeah. and the politicians want to put out as news stories, mm -hmm. and and we've got an interesting kind of kind of semi-liberal media that, funny enough, likes the idea of black misery stories. Yeah, it's quite interesting because you would have thought that they wouldn't want that, but they kind of like that. It's kind What's of the reason behind that, though. Why, that, why, why the agenda? It, yeah. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I, I suppose they think that they think that, that they do it. That, that that's kind of an interesting thing to do. Yeah. So they, they're not interested in stories yeah. about. So, so it's black almost as if like it's what's in in terms of like. That's media, right. Um, yeah, yeah. They, 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 so it's kind of a strange, strange thing of the shift in the media that they, mm. they feel they have to run. And also behind those stories are, are politicians, black mm. politicians, who have a vested interest in a game perpetuating that. Yeah. And they, they they look at me and say, I'm in I'm so, I'm in some sort of denial. Mm. And yet. You know, you've got, you've got, so, 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 for example, a 16 mm. year old wakes up in the morning, a black 16 year old, and what is the state of play for their world? Yeah. It's a positive one. Yeah. It's a positive, they, they, well, in regards to like positive. opportunities and just, like, education, education has never education been so good. good. Yeah. The job situation never been so good. Health. Yeah. Well, health outcomes was a bit, Problematic at the moment. But we live because in London they're, they're, because as, as a human they're, they're probably yeah. eating too much chicken from the chicken <laughs> shop, and that, and that, no, there's a serious obesity problem amongst black kids. Yeah. But that's another and, and diabetes. Is it? That's, but that's another issue. But even even with that one, you see, I mean, you've got you, you've got. I mean, this issue of naming what you need to name and and mm. saying it has been a, 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 been quite interesting. So, yeah. for example, there's a serious issue about black crime. Mm. You know, which we we, we, we we kind of fudging around, you know, we don't yeah. want to say it, you know, and yet we have, in order to say mm. it, we have to say it to, to name it and deal with it. Yeah. And just as there's an issue about mm -hmm. uh, 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 our eating habits, you know, they're not good, you mm. know, and we, we have, in order to solve those problems for those young people, you have to say it. Yeah. Not kind of dress it up and say, oh, well, that's not our problem. Yeah. Or we'll just point it to something yeah. like racism. <laughs> it's it's, 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 it's quite interesting, the, the kinds of things that, that people, you kind of the liberal thing that allows you to say and not say, mm. you know, or, or or is comfortable with yeah. and not comfortable with. It's quite yeah. interesting. And they, and, but as long as they can find something that doesn't blame or doesn't or denies your agency, mm. then they will run with that. Yeah, it's it's interesting you say that because um, <coughs> one of the things that I constantly hear, and I want your your take on <coughs> is that the education is failing black boys. The education system is failing black boys, and black boys in particular are not doing as great. So. Is that the case from your research? No, the research is showing that white boys are not doing so well at the moment. In relation to? In relation to black boys. Let's just oh. take that figure. Yeah. I mean, and it depends on what black boys you're talking about. Mm. If you're talking about basically Caribbean boys, essentially, and some mm. boys from... I mean, this is why the, the term black is a bit mm -hmm. difficult to kind of to slice up. The data is showing that boys essentially from African backgrounds are doing much better. Yeah, you know, and they're doing much better because they've got their dads around in the house, and the Caribbean boys haven't. Let's just just say it what it what it is. And the case with the white working class boys is that basically the parents not, are not seeing enough value in the education system. Is uh, that even with both parents them. around? They're, they've got parents around, but mm. they're not valuing it high enough. Mm. And I think that's that's the reason why they're collapsing. And so you know you know you know. You know Politicians won't name go because they have all. I haven't got any vested interest, so it's, it's, it's no, I can say what I can yeah. say. And um, and those are the three big reasons what's mm. going on, why you have those those discrepancies. So it's not as simple now. Yeah. And um, and and and, and so what it proves is this is nothing to do with teacher racism at all, and nothing actually even to do with the lack of black history or black curriculum. Mm. There's absolutely nothing to do with it. What it what it what what, what it is is that. You're in you're in you're in, an, in a particular type of education system mm -hmm. that needs 
um, a lot of parental support, and particularly for boys who have, like me, would have had a propensity. <laughs> you still don't feel well for yourself though, to go out and wreck the village. <laughs> To go out and wreck the village, yeah. you have to have the, they have to have some restraining yeah. elements to them. I mean, it's a, it, 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 you know, one, one, let me tell you one of the issues, one of the problems we've had is that at the front of the issue with black boys has never been a discussion about black masculinity mm. in, in in a proper. Way. So it's always been black masculinity has always been defined as as again a, a victim. A victimhood, but yes, it, the, the certain extent those boys are victims. But the, mm. the essential problem mm. has been that um, when you're around about the age of eight or nine, you really do, as a little boy, that chemically you are absolutely different, and that's why feminism mm. has found it very difficult to deal with this one mm. because the you, here's where you get the story, and it always comes out. You, you, you're talking in these terms and people think you're going to perpetuate some kind of sexist mm. stereotype, but yeah. I'm not. So they, up, up comes the black woman and she says, oh, I've raised 50 sons on my own and I'm I'm Miss Black Superwoman. Mm. You know, I don't, you know, there was never a man around and I did it, so I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. But for for every one of her, you know, mm. there's about... Because I know, because every, nearly every day I get emails or phone calls from these others, yeah? Mm. Um, who are not coping, you know, mm. who cannot deal with their sons and are desperate for help. Mm. So you can't then say, beat over the other women by saying, oh, well, I can do it. Why can't they? Yeah. You know, the issue is that to, to raise boys in this society at the moment needs some experts. An expert in the field at the moment happens to be men. Mm. They know how to do it. And I think that, and, and, and that, and, I mean, that, not that all of them know how to do it, but yeah. they have a, they have an ability to they do it. They have to be it. worthwhile, don't they? <laughs> yeah, because you, yeah. you can just throw out and say any man and any other man can do it, mm. but it does require expertise. And it doesn't say that women can't do it either mm. with, without support. Mm. But you can't say, oh, we don't need a man, mm. which is actually where the politics is going at the moment. It's kind of saying that, look, we can do all of these things, men, men and to be honest, the politics is even moving to a point where it's saying that men and boys are pr probably useless, really. <laughs> and that all we need, all we need, is just to kind of they're around to sort of maybe perpetuate the, the species, but that's about it. Yeah. And I just think that that's that's where the politics is at the moment. It's serious, yeah. and I've, I've never seen it so blatant. You know, it's sort of anti-man. It really mm. is, and it's kind of like. And I, I feel sorry for little boys growing up because they've got no experience. I mean, you imagine now you're a black boy in, in, in some part of Brixton. You you, you, you get up in the morning, you've got your mum, but your dad's gone mm. for whatever reason he's gone. He's not, he's a ghost, yeah? yeah. And so therefore you got the mum, you got her friends, mm -hmm. you got the aunties around, you got all these women around. Mm -hmm. Suddenly this this chemical thing kicks off in inside you, mm. and and then you got to go out to deal with the world. Then you have got your your primary school teacher, your nursery school teacher. Yeah. You got you got no men around, and then suddenly the two men that you might confront, you know, is in and this is a real stereotype. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 other boy who's just been kind of totally disengaging the society, you know, maybe some little drug dealer somewhere in a corner, and the police. Yeah. That's probably the only two male role models you got. And, and you're meant to go off in the world and be successful. So what I'm trying to say is that there's, there's a sort of sense that, um, and then you can't even blame the school for that or blame society for that. Mm. What you've got to do is you've got to acknowledge that um, small boys need guidance and I think that the kind of guidance they need is the one that says that, you know, thus far and no further. They they do they really want that. They mm. want that, but they're not getting it. And uh, and and um, then you, if, if you're going to build a society that says, or you know, to look at the the way in which it's set up, and then once you say, look, okay, these particular communities haven't got males in there, what are we going to do on a policy level to help them? Yeah. 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 And that's, that's why, what I did. Is why, that's why I created Generating Genius to a certain extent. Mm. Because I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a little kind of um, underground 
thing. You know, remember the old underground that you led know, the slaves from America to, to Canada. So, and the people I was running from wasn't, weren't, weren't, not white people. I was running from the mad people who were telling us about racism. Yeah. I wanted to protect them from that. And so, um, and also I wanted to show in, I wanted to demonstrate with Generating Genius that there were, that you could create a community almost like an, almost like another gang of black yeah. boys that was, that, that, that was, was the alternative. Mm. So, so how does um, Generating Genius function? Like how is the service delivered? Well, at the moment, it's, I mean, it's changing now radically. First of all, we used to deliver it. I used to deliver it. Yeah. So, and, and I used to feel that in the end, what, we used to, what I used to do was just have an extension of my family, really. So mm. in the end, we were about 50. I could just about get them all in the back of my car. So that was, <laughs> that was the idea. And it was based on this whole idea. It was a mm. mad idea that I was the leader and then you lot just follow me mm. and go over the the top like they did in the first world war just mm. come over with me and mm. it'll be all right i mean that's basically what it was yeah. except the, the the biggest challenge was the intellectual one the war the the kind of mm. thing that we were doing was about science yeah i picked up the one that i knew in the end and that was about 15 years ago was the issue that we were not in the space for nobody nobody associated black boys and science mm. i mean if i did and i hate to say i, I love drama and i love music and I love all those other things. And mm. I, I'd done a project around that, people would have got it. But yeah. when I go in and say, well, black boys and science and yeah. technology. Mm. And, and so I, I've tried to find the hardest, the thing that wasn't us the usual space. Yeah. Remember, I'm about connecting these boys to the world, yeah. the mainstream world. And um, I found the science space, and I'm not a scientist myself, really fascinating. Mm. And I found the boys were really good at it, mm. very good at it. Yeah. Um, spectacularly good at it, actually. Yeah. I mean, scarily good well, at was it. Was the assumption they weren't good at it before because they weren't exposed well, to it? Well, it's not even good place. at it. It wasn't like they weren't, they weren't, it just wasn't. It's like, for example, I remember, let me give you an example. We went on the train, because I used to take the voice everywhere. Because by then, by that time, I was quite well connected. I had lots of friends, you know, yeah. all different. Don't have any and friends this anymore. This, <laughs> is, this is the point about <laughs> connecting with the mainstream world. So, yeah. I, as a, so I knew the air squadron leader for the RAF. Oh, yeah? wow. Me and either. so I said to him, look, you've got to have some black boys in here because I can't see any black people in here. Mm. And he said, yeah, Tony, if you know any, I'll, you can have the base, you can do all the training, just bring them up. So we, we used to send them up to... Um, Grantham in Newark, and we used to go mm. on the train from, um, uh, what was the station? Uh, well, I forgot the name of the station. King's Cross. Oh, from okay, King's yeah, Cross. Yeah. And we used to go up to Grantham to the air base. And I remember one time, we, this is a question about why we, why, why science and why not anything else. And so you can imagine me with, with a group of little 14 year old black boys, on, on, on uh, 20 of us on the train. <laughs> and then one guy, he's a nice little old man, says, oh, you're going to some basketball camp. <laughs> and I said, I said, no, we're, I said, no, we're scientists. Yeah. And we're actually going to be trained by the RAF to um, fight fighter pilots, two million pound ones, you know, yeah. and it's a fantastic opportunity. And he's probably like, no, you're going to steal pots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, he, I didn't blame him for that. He, yeah. he, he, the, I mean, Black people would have maybe. I mean, it, it, it's the perception was that we were we were out there to, to do sport. Mm. I don't mind that, but I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say was that nobody would have thought that that was what we were up to. Yeah, we were, we were always up to doing high level science. Yeah, amazing. And um, so I, I mean, job done really with that one because of of those group that the the group that I took originally. Um, well, we had there was twenty and it grew to about. 70, 80, that mm -hmm. original group, that cycle. Now we have about 400 oh, wow. cycling through. But um, all of them, every single one of them got into a top university to That's do science. Amazing. Everyone. One, 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 you know, you have a couple you might lose on the way for different reasons, mm. but it didn't end up in anything negative. And um, all of them are working and, do, and they're now part of our alumni and they come mm. back. And, um, uh, and so I suppose for me that, it, it just proved, and we didn't do it. I, I hate to say this to your viewers looking at this. They might want, they might want. See, people want me to have a certain narrative. Mm. Did I sit down with them and, and? I mean, I've written a book about Marcus Garvey, and I've written my own Black History book. Yeah. But I didn't do. I didn't have time. To, there was so much science to do. Mm. I didn't have time to sit down and say, you know, 
talk to them about Rosa Parks or talk to them about whatever. Yeah, you just want I to just, work done, yeah. We just did science. Mm. And I think the only, the, the thing that drove, if there was any black thing that was around there was me. Mm. If that was, if they wanted to latch on to that, because I provided leadership at the time. Mm. Um, but I mean, the, 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 the real, the, 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 the thing was, was that, that so much of it was about what I was saying about my early days, giving them, seeing that they could control their own destiny. Yeah. And they were doing so well. They changed. They changed in terms of the way they talked, in terms of the aspirations. Yeah. It all just became, a, um, you know, a kind of, yeah, a transformational story, really, a narrative with them.